Yeah, obviously with, with, with kids, especially grassroots football, I think, especially if you're not sort of in the academy or outside the sort of academy, you've got different levels. And the key driving factor for every session is fun. Yeah, it's fun and learning. And you need to find the right mix to do it. If you give too much too soon, the quality won't be there. So it doesn't really have any effect. So it's, 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 a, fine, it's a fine line. If you have selected academy players, it's like driving a car. You know, the better the players, it's like faster the car, the faster you can go. So the players will always respond to the environment you create. You as a coach, you are the one that has to put the menu together that is right for the players you're working with. I think uh, the, the main thing is to know what you want to do because it's not the same to be an academy coach than to be a professional coach and to be a so because if you want to be an academy coach you need to be patient you need to teach the players the first skills the first kind of things and if you want to to be a professional coach is going to be more difficult because uh, there is just one, two leagues in each country, so they are uh, 40, or we are 40 uh, coaches uh, just to, to manage, so it's, it's difficult. And then if you decide to, to be an academy coach, to be clear that you need to, again, to be patient, to, to teach the, the players. And uh, again, for me, the, the main thing is to, to know clear what you want to do. And uh, the main thing for me is... I told you at the beginning that uh, my father told me is uh, to be yourself and uh, to to do the things that you think that they are the right thing for the for the for the team, because at the end you are the reflection of the of the players. And uh, for me, the main thing is when uh, when a team uh, on the pitch uh, reflects uh, the personality of the of their coach. In terms of their own development, to to go and watch as many good coaches working as they possibly can, uh, and and try and analyse what those good coaches are doing, and and if they get access to them, ask them why they did things, how how they did things, how they got to that particular position. Uh, as far as working with young players, first of all, they have to understand that the young player will make mistakes. There's absolutely no problem. There was a young lad out there who got a, looked a little bit upset when he'd lost the ball and it resulted in the goal and he could have played forward. He looked as if uh, he didn't mean that to happen. He was working really, really hard. So the important thing is that he doesn't go home thinking, you know, my world's just ended because it, it hasn't. They, they make mistakes. They hopefully learn from those mistakes. Um, so you have, to, you have to understand that, that the game that, that we see as coaches, when we're not right in amongst it, is an awful lot easier than the game that, that they're actually playing in. And uh, One of the things I can tell you for sure about when I've been coaching is I've never made a bad pass. Um, you know, I don't make bad decisions when I'm, when I'm standing on the sides. I, I know that you should pass at this moment, at that angle and at that speed. Um, it's, it's really easy. I made I made plenty of mistakes when I was a player, so uh, so it's, it's vitally important that coaches recognise that. It's also important to recognise where the players are, and that if the players can't do something, uh, you know, and they found that difficult today, uh, certainly as we moved on from the, from the earlier practices, if they can't do it, then it's vitally important that the coach looks at a way of getting them to a position where they will be able to do it. So for me, looking at the boys there, I would have to take them back to, to a more technical practice and embed that in before. So my first practice for them leading up to what happened at the end would be very different. How long will that take? Don't know. Depends on the players. Um, I've been really fortunate in that I've worked with some very, very strong groups and those groups have moved on really quickly. And I've worked with weaker groups who have taken longer to get to the same position. And that's, that's the way things are. You, you, uh, I hate it when I hear coaches saying the players are rubbish, they can't do it. Well, the job of the coach is to make the players better and, and hopefully get them to a position where they can do it. Uh, and, and yeah, you cannot, you're not a magician, but you can, I do believe you can help players to, to become better. They might not become good enough for, for where they want to get to and where you want them to get to, but 
they can they can certainly improve and, and uh, so so patience um, looking at yourself as a coach and finding another way finding a different way of, of helping the group but also individuals within the group because they're all they're all different yeah I mean I think for me it's about I know sometimes for those people it's hard to have the time to really you know spend lots of time thinking about coaching but I think the time that you have um, for me it's just you know get as much resources as you can just to just to increase your understanding first and foremost the second thing for me is that the, the sessions don't have to be complicated you know you can take you can take especially for the younger age kids you can take really simple games and just put them into a, a coaching session um, and just utilize them you know to inspire the kids. for me it's about positivity with the young players it's about creating a situation where they're not fearful of making a poor pass they're relaxed on the ball, they enjoy it, they're infused by it first and foremost. Um, and then I think as, as you start to then advance as a coach, the one thing I would say then is try, to, try your best to try to make the practice have some semblance of a game. You know, so if you're going into 9v9 games and you might be playing three defenders, three midfielders, three attackers as you set up, you know, try, and, try and use some of those games to teach a little bit of spatial awareness. You know, how can we spread out and create a bit of space? Um, you know, how can we utilise that space a little bit? And because then they can use those principles to take through um, as the kids get a little bit older and need a little bit more understanding of the game in terms of those principles. But enthusiasm for me is you can't beat it, you know, regardless of your knowledge of the game. Uh, the, for me, absolutely the best information would be the game is changing. You know, and uh, certainly a thirst for knowledge, uh, a hard work, um, putting in the extra hours, doing the over and above, and it's, and it's, you know, there are, you know, two types of learnings. You know, one is, you know, off the training pitch, uh, and one is on the training pitch, and certainly to try and put as many hours as you can, you know, on the training pitch, because that's where, you know, where you build up your confidence is our, our taking sessions. Uh, and sometimes that's very difficult. It's very difficult for a young aspiring coach that, that wants to coach, but isn't managing a team, you know, maybe doing part coaching with the team. And so, so it's, it's trying to get as many uh, coaching hours in as you can. And sometimes that might be, you know, dropping down the age levels. And um, that might be somebody that, that, that really wants to be coaching senior players, but is taking you know, the under 18s or the under 16s. Now for me, as opposed to waiting for, the, for that opportunity and not getting them hours on the training pitch, I think it's important that they do. And if that means dropping down a level to perhaps where they want to be coaching, then it, for me, it's vitally important to get them coaching hours in because that's what you know, builds up your confidence. Going into management, what builds up your confidence is, is all of them team talks that you have to do. So whether it's a senior group, a girls group, a ladies group, men's group, them pre-match talks, half-time talks, debriefs. Um, so spend as much time as you can and don't, don't be afraid that if you can't get what you want to help somebody else out, um, take another team that you don't, you, you perhaps didn't want to take, but it's really about putting in them them hours and of course that that thirst for knowledge. We're in a, an era also where it's important um, to get your your badges, your qualifications, um, because that in this day and age is is very much a requirement. I think uh, you've got to see yourself and say, do I add value as a coach? be it academy director or an assistant under 11 coach under nine, whatever it may be, do I as an individual add value to this system, to this development model? If I, you know, what do I have to do to make sure I keep adding value? And that was what I always found. I always, you, know, you have to challenge yourself. You have to go the extra mile. You may be the last one at the session locking the gates at 10 o'clock. You may be the first one there in the morning. Whatever it may be, you add that value. As basic as it may sound, take the visit, go to the course. You know, I'm, I'm tired, I need to see the family. And, but you have to go and get yourself qualified as best you possibly can. And the moment you stop pushing, others will go past you. The moment you stand still, others just fly past because it's the, it's the world's game. 
you know, everyone wants to be involved in football. They want to be in the, the highest possible position. They want to keep pushing forward and they'll show a hunger and an appetite to, to educate themselves. And you have to make sure you do the same. But if you can turn around and say, I add value by doing this, then I think you've been in a good place.